Once upon a time, in the old days, there lived a young man by the name of Don Chu. He was more than ordinary strength, and no one could withstand him. He was also wild and undisciplined, and wherever he was, quarrels and brawls arose. Yet the village elder never ventured in to punish him seriously. He wore a high hat on his head adorned with two besom's wings. His garments were woven of embroidered silk, and at his side hung the dragon spring sword he was given to play and to drinking, and his hand was inclined to take that which belonged to others. Whoever offended him had reason to dread the consequences, and he always mixed into disputes in which others were engaged. Thus he kept it up for years, and was a pest throughout the neighborhood. Then a new Mandarin came to that district. When he arrived, he first went quietly about the country, and listened to the people's complaints, and they told him that there were three great evils in that district. Then he clothed himself in coarse garments, and wept before Don Chu's door. Don Chu was just coming from the tavern, where he had been drinking. He was slapping a sword and singing in a loud voice. When he heard his house, he asked, Who is weeping here so pitifully? And the Mandarin replied, I'm weeping because of the people's distress. Then Don Chu saw him and broke out into loud laughter. You are mistaken, my friend. <laughs> Revolt as Satan around about is like boiling water in a kettle, but... Here in our little corner, the land all is quiet and peaceful. The harvest has been abundant, corn is plentiful, and all go happily about their work. When you talk to me about distress, I have to think of the man who groans without being sick. And who are you, tell me that, who instead of grieving for yourself are grieving for others? And what are you doing before my door? He said. I am the new mandarin, replied the other. Since I left my letter, I've been looking about in the neighborhood. I find the people are honest and simple in their way of life, and everyone has sufficient to wear and to eat, and this is all just as you state. Yet, strange to say, when the elders come together, they always sigh and complain, and if they are asked why, they answer, There are three great evils in our district. I've come to ask you to do away with those two of them, as to the third, perhaps I had better remain silent, and this is the reason I weep before your door. Well, what are these evils? answered Danchu. Speak freely and tell me openly all that you know. The first evil, said the Mandarin, is the evil dragon at the long bridge, who causes the water to rise so that the man and beast are drowned in the river. The second evil is the tiger, the white forehead who dwells in the hills, and the third evil, Don Chu, is yourself. Then the blush of shame mounted to the man's cheek, and he bowed and said, You have come here from afar to be the Mandarin of this district, and yet you feel such pity for the people. I was born in this place, and yet I have only made our elders grieve. What sort of a creature must I be? I beg you, you will return home again. I will see to it that matters improve. Then he ran without stopping to the hills and hunted the tiger out of his cave. The latter leaped into the air so that the whole forest was shaken as though by a storm. Then he came rushing up, roaring and stretching out his claws savagely to seize his enemy. Don Chu stepped back a pace and the tiger lit on the ground directly in front of him. Then he thrust the tiger's neck to the ground with his left hand and beat him without stopping him with his right until he lay dead on the earth. Dan Chu loaded the tiger on his back and went home. Then he went to the long bridge. He undressed, took his sword into his hand, and thus dived into the water. No sooner had he disappeared than there was a boiling and hissing, and the waves began to foam and billow. It sounded like the mad beating of thousands of hoofs. After a time, a stream of blood shot up from the depths, and the water of the river turned red. Then Don Chu, holding the dragon in his hand, rose out of the waves. He went to the Mandarin and reported with a bow, I have cut off the dragon's head, and have also done away with the tiger. Thus I have happily accomplished your command, and now 
I shall wander away, so you may be rid of the third evil as well. Lord, watcher of my country, and tell the elders that they need sorrow no more. When he had said this, he enlisted as a soldier. In combat against the robbers, he gained a great reputation, and once when the latter were pressing him hard, and he saw that he could not save himself, he bowed to the east and said, The day has come at last. I can atone for my sin with my life. Then he offered his neck to the sword and died.